All right. You know, we, I sure appreciate the prayers of, of you folks. We probably had a, a vacation and a half. We just had so many blessings. You know, being at the leadership conference was, was just tremendous, just tremendous. And as we were all praying as we went, Lord, we need something. I don't know what we need, but we need something. And I'll tell you, we sure got a bunch. Uh, I wrote down some things I wanted to share with you as we jump into the message. The message tonight will be, uh, it's on prayer. And the, the, John asked me for a title, and I had to think about it. Attitudes in prayer. Attitudes in prayer. You can take your Bible, go to Matthew chapter 6. We'll start there, but I want to read something to you that I think is a good, uh, a good launch into this message that I received at the leadership conference and just some things that God's been doing in my heart as a little bit of an introduction. All right, you get that Matthew 6. Let me get you to look up here. Um, at the leadership conference, there was a there was some emphasis on a whole lot of things, and it really speaks to our hearts, many of us, in different ways. But the one thing that really spoke to my heart, here's something that somebody said, and it just made so much sense. God speaks to us and through divine circumstances. We must be willing to allow God to do his divine disturbances. Sometimes we don't know what God's doing. It's okay. We know our God. We know he loves us. We know he wants the best for us. But allow him to do those things. Allow him to, uh, and that just really jumped out at me. And I said, you know, I'm going to write that down. Here's another one. Nothing is fully known until it is tested. Nothing is fully known until it is tested. We really don't know ourselves like we think we do. But when we go through the testing, and I've said it and I'll say it forever and ever, you better get you some verses because you're going to need them. This Bible is the answer. And we certainly need to know some things about God and, and just keep rehearsing those things in our mind because we're going to go through it. Um, here's something else. There are many things that only God can fix. There are many things that only God can fix. So submit to God for the outcome. I'll tell you, thinking about that is not as wonderful as a verse, but it's close <laughs> because it's, it's a Bible principle. Um, I wrote this down too. It does not matter who you are. It matters who your God is. Because we know we don't have the stamina. We don't have the ability. And I like this one here. I had quite a few more, but I went through them. I just wanted to share a few with you. And I got this at the leadership conference. It was just so spoke to my heart when I was there. These things, things that I needed personally. God wants you to hear and not to be so needing to see. And I immediately thought of our Wednesday nights and all the different lessons that we've had on faith. And it just made me think about that. But God wants us to hear. He doesn't, we don't need to see, we need to hear Him. So, faith is everything Him, sight is mostly me. So those are just some things that I gleaned from the, uh, from the conference that, uh, and there's a lot more, but I didn't want to take all the time to share those, but I just wanted you to... Uh, feel a little bit about what I, what I received when I was there because the whole, our whole trip was just amazing, just amazing, even the plane ride. You know, here we are, you know, Liz and I are sitting over here. I have this passenger on my side so my wife can sleep over here. And then pastor's right across the aisle and Rhonda, and he's on the inside and pastor's on the other side so she can sleep on that side, <laughs> right? And then the Shaws were behind them. So as, as the plane got in flight, you know, it's kind of cool that the, the plane was packed. They didn't, our passengers didn't have anywhere to go much. So pretty soon I was reading my Bible and I'm praying and asking God, what can I say to try and open up the door to witness to this person sitting next to me? And as I'm kind of starting to share and show her some things, I kind of glance over and here's Jill. She's got her Bible open and she's witnessing to the person next to her. And then I found out later, Pastor was taking notes. Here's the, both ways. I'm just saying, we had, here's the thing, it's fun to serve God. 
it's fun to serve God. We had fun out there. We had fun at the conference. We stayed with a wonderful family, the Almonds, and, and they had three wonderful girls, and we just had just a glorious time there. And then we got a car, and we, fl we flew. No, we didn't fly, but we were flying and uh, on our way to Phoenix and about 260 miles out and had a flat tire. Now, the car's only got 16,000 miles on it. That's not supposed to happen. And then you get to ride to Phoenix on a donut. 260 miles. That's not good either. But you know what? God got us there. By the way, that increased my prayer life. Because <laughs> I read the manual. I had to read the manual where to put the jack because I didn't want to mess something up, you know, you know how these new cars are. And uh, long story short, we, uh, we got there in 260 miles later. But uh, I, I was reading in the manual, and it said, advised 50 miles an hour. I'm like, right, I'm going to go 50 miles an hour all the way there. So I figured, well, if they said 50, they probably meant 60. So, <laughs> so I went 60. We made it, but nevertheless, you know. So, so we had a wonderful time. And, of course, in Phoenix, and we hopped on a plane, and we went to Hawaii for six days and met another family there that just loves the Lord and, and just one blessing after another. You know, it's great when you're not seeking anything but to just serve the Lord and, and, and God gives you some time of relaxation and and then I got to go golfing, and uh, I asked the Lord, just let me have some fun, and he let me have some fun, unbelievable, you know. And I got to witness to those two different people that I golfed with, and uh, I'll tell you that, probably tell you that story a little bit later, but it was just, just an amazing trip, and I appreciate, I say all that to say this, thank you for your prayers. So many of you have come up to us, me and Liz, and you've just, you know, how was your trip? We heard it was good, this and that, and I know you've been praying for us, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, it's fun to get away. It's good to have a vacation, but it's, it's good to come back and let's go to work. Let's go to work. And we have some exciting times going on right now, but, uh, you know, pray for, pray for the house and the insurance company and pray for the deacons and pastor for the wisdom that they need and what we should do, and, uh, and let's just keep going forward. All right, you're there in Matthew 6. and start reading at verse 6. Verse 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door... Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that, that, for they, think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's been said over the years, prayer is asking and receiving. Prayer is communicating with God. And I think that as we pray, we shouldn't just be telling God what we want and what we need. I think we should be listening to Him too. Lord, what do you think about this? It should be a communication. We should, uh, you know, he, gives, he does give us insight. If we go to 1 Corinthians 2, it says that His Spirit will help us understand certain things. And He'll give us that insight that we need. I like this thought. Prayer helps us keep our sanity. You could go nuts if you don't pray. But if you'll pray... And you'll really see, you know, when we pray, it's not just bringing a list. You know, I, I, uh, I kind of thought about not bringing this, but this is my, I like pictures. Some of these have holes in them because they were on my dartboard. No, they weren't. But I have pictures, and I like to, like, there's the Brandenburgs, you know. And, and you remember this guy? He's the guy that we met out in California, Lupe Duarte. You say, why do you still have his picture? I pray for his family. Pray for his girls. By the way, there's, there's uh, Brother Shirley right there in the background. Just happened to get caught in the picture. Here's the thing. It's not vain repetition because I go through that. As I'm praying and I look at that, I can say, Lord, what is it, of, what is it about the, the Duarte family? What should, I be, what should I pray for more? He can give us the impression of pray for his daughters more. Pray for his wife. I mean, there's things, folks, we need to have a prayer list. I've heard it said, and it's a true thing. If you don't have a prayer list, by the way, this is my list for Friday and Sunday. I have about four or five lists, and some of my, I do them twice a week. Uh, listen, I'm nobody special, but I'm just encouraging you. You've got to have a prayer list. Uh, it's impossible to be a good Christian without a consistent prayer life. You've got to have a consistent prayer life. 
And as we pray, it has to be more than just praying for people or praying for ourselves or praying for situations. It should be a prayer life when we come to God that we love Him and that we honor Him and that we seek Him with all of our heart, that we seek that fellowship with Him. That's a lot of what prayer is. And when we do that, He gives us that stamina and the ability to be able to cope with life and situations and all that, th all that we need to do. All right, let's, let's do this. Let's pray before we go any further. Dear God, we love you so much, Father. Lord, I pray that you'll help me to be able to empty myself, Father, and that I'll be able to hear from you. And Holy Spirit, help me to say those things, exactly what you want me to say, to be a help to our people. Lord, we love our church. We love our pastor. I pray you'll restore him to health, Father. I pray you'll give him wisdom, the deacon's wisdom, Father, regarding the, the home. And I pray that you'll just uh, help the insurance company to concur. And Lord, we just love you so much. We know that you're our source. We know that you can take care of our many situations. We just commit our situations to you. I pray that you'd help us all, Father, to benefit from this message. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, attitudes in prayer, attitudes in prayer. Go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. That's just before 2 Peter, if that helps you. <laughs> Probably just go back to the back of the book and come forward a little bit and you'll find it. You say, that's not proper English. That's what Cindy would say. But uh... All right, 1 Peter chapter 5. When I look at verses, I look at verses as an attitude. 1 Peter 5, look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You know, our God loves us more than anybody. He does. And when I think of this verse, I think of other verses. I think this one here. I like this verse. You can write it down, Romans 8, 31. It says, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Our God's for us. He wants us to, to prosper and be in good health. He wants us to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wants us to have advance in our jobs. He wants us to have success. He wants us to think right too, though, by the way. There's a lot of instructional things in the Bible. I like this one here. Uh, Psalms 27, 13. I had fainted and thus I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Many times we've seen the goodness of the Lord and we understand that he's going to take care of biz, but we're so forgetful to do the simple things that he asks us to do, such as casting all your care upon him. I think one of the greatest problems, and certainly one of the greatest problems in my life, is not having the right attitude towards God in my prayer life. That's where this message has come from. But since I've been uh, doing a lot of thinking, that's one thing about the leadership conference. It causes you to think. You know, you take down your notes, and then you're thinking. Uh, I don't know, it's a little different preaching out there, but it causes you to think. And I'm not used to that. It wears me out. You know, my brain just gets taxed, you know, and I'm like, man. And I start thinking, you know, and sometimes I go to the altar and I say, now why am I here? You know, that's why you have to go after every message, you know, so you can, okay, got that, I understand that. And then later on, it's just amazing. And that's why you order the CDs and the different things so you can hear certain messages again. So casting all your care upon him for he careth for you, we need to do that. And I think that we do that as a body of believers. We're good at doing that many times, but we don't necessarily have the right attitude. Look at the verse before that. The verse before that in verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that, that he may exalt you in due time. And then it says, casting all your care upon him. You know, if you have a humble spirit and a humble attitude towards God, as you get on your knees and you reach out to him and pray to him, it's going to be different. It's not going to be consuming it upon our lust. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be what he wants, what he requires of us. It's not going to be something that's just, you know, for me, taking care of me. Uh, look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, be sober. And that just means think right. We need to think properly and think clearly, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. I think a lot of times we allow the devil to devour us because we're not doing the verses before that. We don't have a humble attitude, and we're not casting all our care upon him. If God's not going to take care of us now, how's he going to take care of us for eternity? And the, the way he takes care of us now is he gives us his Holy Spirit once we get saved, does he not? He's given us a holy Bible. Amen. 
whereby we can meditate therein day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. And our delight can be in the Bible and we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We can be flourishing regardless of situations. But it's our choice. We can, you can think whatever you want. Well, I, I'm just of the opinion that we need to get an attitude towards God. We need to think right. We need to have that proper attitude in prayer as we come to prayer. Let me read again. Look at verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, because there's more here. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, mature, make you, that's what perfect means, maturing, makes you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Listen, brethren, we're going to suffer. Things are going to happen that you're not going to agree with. Things are going to happen that you have no control over. But if we'll cast all our care upon him. And isn't it wonderful the way God outlines it? The way he, he, he says, it, it happened to your brethren too. Don't be so surprised. And after you suffer a while, I'm going to settle you. I'm going to establish you. I'm going to comfort you. We serve a wonderful God. But brethren, you're not going to have that if you don't have the right attitude in prayer, if you're not humble, if you're not seeking Him with all of your heart. You know, the Bible says plainly, seek, seek me with all your heart and, and I shall be found of you. You know, commit your way to the Lord and He'll bring it to pass. He'll bring what to pass? Whatever's going on in your life. He'll bring it to pass. Makes a general statement. Commit thy way into the Lord and He'll bring it to pass. So, uh, I just think these are attitudes that we need to have. All right, go to Philippians. These are verses that I rehearse in my mind many, many times, but it really hit me right between the running lights when I was in California, and it made it even clearer as to the way I need to pray and the way that I need to think about situations. Philippians chapter 4. All right, look at verse 4. And, and here again, it's amazing to me how God orchestrates the context and the way that he puts thoughts together in chapters, especially when you start looking at it, okay? Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, and we know these verses, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. And I'll just stop right there just for a second. You notice the instruction leading up to prayer. These are attitudes. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Well, I wonder what that means. It means exactly what it says. Listen, if you're not going to hell, you really don't have the problems you think you do. And if the rapture happens tonight, hallelujah, everything's good. Well, why not live as if the rapture is going to happen the next day? Why not realize that, you know, why have sorrow beyond that, you know? I'm, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We have hope. We are breaking out of here. We have a wonderful God in heaven who loves us and wants the very best for us. So when you got situations, don't just, oh, what am I going to do? I can't believe all this happened. Believe it. It's happening for a reason. The major reason that things happen in our life is to change our attitude so that we fall in love with him. He wants us to want him. For years and years and years, I go golfing. And even when I didn't golf very much, I would always pray, Lord, just let me have some fun today. Just let me hit some good shots and let me just have some fun today. And I can't tell you. I mean, Brother Ken, he'll, he'll tell you. Anybody that can hit the ball in the woods consistently and the ball ricochets and comes back in the fairway, that's God. <laughs> Brother Wade will tell you. He's seen it happen. I I'll tell you, God lets me have fun out there. Well, it was the same situation when I got to golf on, on Hawaii. You don't say it Hawaii. It's Hawaii, okay, what they said. Now, here's the whole thing. It was a wonderful, wonderful time of golf, but here's the thing. I got to witness to those people that I play golf with. And it's interesting, the second round that I got to play, this guy was just me and him, and he was 38, and I got to talking to him, and I don't know how we got on the subject, just God, because I had prayed for the other ones to be able to witness to them, and he said, you know, he said, I've had 12 months recovery. 
But he said, as far as this higher power and the different things, he says, I'm not real clear on that. So we helped him out with that a little bit. I didn't, he didn't get saved, but I got to talk to him and have some good witness to him. And here we are on the 17th hole, and we're surrounded by the ocean. Just beautiful. And there's nobody behind us because they let us play through. They were a couple holes behind us. So we walked back there on the sand, this and that, and we're looking at the ocean and we're enjoying that. I said, isn't this beautiful? And I said, you know, in God, and there were some plants there. I said, you know, and God's made plants in this world that he's made male and female plants, and the only way that they can reproduce is through the insects. I said, that shows that there is a supreme being, that there is a creator that did all this, that set it in place. He goes, you know, I have to agree with you. Well, here's the thing, and I kept praying inside and saying, Lord, how can I witness to this guy furthermore? And, and here's what God did. God said, on the 18th hole when I got ready to leave, I reached, and I've got this new Bible here that I stole from my wife because she's not using it. But I had one track left, and I had this, I had my New Testament, and I went to the Gospel of John, and I put that track in there, and I said, you know, if you'll read the Gospel of John, and you pray and ask God, the creator, his name is Jesus. You ask him to reveal himself to you, and you'll read the Gospel of John. And I said, and here's my number. I said, if you'll do that, the supreme being, Jesus Christ, will reveal himself to you. Amen. And I gave him my Bible. Now listen, folks, I'm nobody special, and I'm not trying to tell you anything to impress you. I'm trying to tell you that God, through prayer, can use us. And you know what happens whenever, whenever we follow him? We have joy unspeakable. We get to have fun. It was fun just being in Hawaii. You know, I mean, 85 and sunny. Can you picture that? You know, feeling the heat of the sun. Oh, I'm getting warm. Just saying, take my, no, I won't. I'm just saying it, it was just glorious being there. But I'll tell you, to be able to be used of God and then to, you know, listen, since you asked, I had six pars and a birdie on the front 18. I did. By the way, I parred the next two holes on the, next, on the 19th and the 20th hole. So technically, no, here's the thing. We, ha we got to have fun. It's not about that. It's about just serving God. It's, a, it's about how God can intervene and let you have some fun. All right, back to Philippians 4. It says, verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I think that is an attitude that we don't have a lot of times when we pray. We're not thankful. Lord, thank you for this problem. Yeah, right. I'm going to say that. Well, we're admonished in Scripture. I could show you at least 10 Scriptures right now where, and be ye thankful. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful. Thankful for things that go wrong. Sometimes those things that go wrong keep us from other issues that go on. You know, either there's a God in heaven that's going to take care of us or there isn't, and he is in heaven, and he is there, and he wants the very best for us, and we need to be thankful no matter what goes on in our life, and we need to just fall in love with God so that he can make up the difference and help us to have that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Verse 6, be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Look at the progression. Verse 4, rejoice. Verse 5, let your moderation be known. You need to talk for the Lord. He is at hand. The Lord is at hand. And then verse 6, be careful for nothing. That means don't be worrying. Don't be so, oh, what am I going to do? Just relax. It says in everything by prayer. Okay, pray and talk to God. Supplication, that's a supply word. Do what you can do. And then what's the next one? Sir? With thanksgiving. And then you let your request be made known unto God. See, if we don't get our attitude right, what happens is we're talking to God about that. He says, I can't even talk to you. You're not even thinking right. You got the wrong attitude. Can you see it? And this is what God's been doing in my life. I'll just get very, very personal, and I'll, and I'll tell you something. We had the opportunity. Um, I told you on the way to Phoenix, we had a, a flat tire. Now, when we were going to Phoenix, we knew we were going to get to see our grandkids, and that's hallelujah. And we didn't get to have as much time with them as we would have liked, but because of the flights and different things and things that went on, that's all we had. We got there on a Friday night. We got to see them Friday night, have dinner with them, and then Saturday morning we got to see them for a little bit, and then, then we were heading to the airport to fly out to go to Hawaii. Now, I tell you all that to say this. I got to see my grandkids and their mama but I didn't get to see my Jeremy. 
And if I think about that all the time, that's tough. But let me tell you something. God gave me a verse. God gave me a verse. Go to Romans 15, 13. I like what Brother Kirby said, and I like what was said about him, that he had to dig his way out of his issues, and he did that using the Bible. And brethren, that's what God gave me. God gave me a verse. And I have thought about this verse, and I wrote down this verse, and it's just been so helpful to me. Because this is an attitude that I need to have as I pray. Look at verse 13, Romans 15, 13. It says, now the God of, all, the God of hope, and he is a God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope. How do I do that? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Spirit that lives inside you is not just there. He's there for a reason. He's there to give us power over sin. We don't have to live in sin. We don't have to let sin dictate and run our lives. And we don't have to let these, these events and situations, we don't have to let some... Listen, I love my kids. Jeremy and I were very, very close. And we worked together hours and hours. And I love Jeremy. But here's the thing. Am I going to let a situation with a kid keep me from my joy and my peace? And I'm not being callous, and I cry, but I am not. Listen, I, I serve the God of all hope. And I have a hope that is steadfast and sure that I'm going to pray for him, and he's going to have a hard time because there's a God in heaven that's going to, Keep hitting them and keep hitting them. And listen, my God loves him more than I do. And my God will cause events and situations in his life. I'm not going to worry about it much. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. You know, if I hadn't had that attitude as we'd have went to the house to see the mother of our grandkids and our grandkids, which was a glorious time. It was a wonderful time, even though it was shorter. It wasn't as long as we would have liked it, but I'm telling you, it was wonderful and glorious. And I think it helped her, too. I'll tell you what, though. God gave me a verse. Pay attention when you're reading your Bible, because it'll help you in your prayer life. It'll help you to have the right attitude as you do pray. Because we need to pray. We need to pray without ceasing. Well, where is that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. It's amazing how, you know, in your life you can memorize a verse, and then all of a sudden, one day, the Lord says, look at the verse before that. Look at the verse after that. And you start putting it together, and you go, wow. Our God is a genius. Amen. Well, we ought to figure that out a long time ago, <laughs> you know. All right, look at 1 Thessalonians 5. We'll just look at, look at the verse. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Well, duh. I mean, that, pray without ceasing. That sounds pretty good. But look at the verse before. The verse before says, rejoice evermore. You see that attitude? Get that attitude. I'm rejoicing. Man, I know I'm going to heaven. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to pray without ceasing. And then verse 18 gets us sober real fast. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks again? Again, he hits us with that. These are attitudes we need to have in our prayer life. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And look at verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's trying to do something in our life. And the only way He's going to do something in our life is if we get out of the way. Well, I know what I want. God's a lot smarter than we are. We ought to let God run our life. We ought to let God be the boss. We ought to let God dictate how we think. Casting down imaginations, that's not just wicked, evil thoughts. That's wrong thoughts. 
casting down imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. If you have the knowledge of God, he's for us, he wants the best for me, okay, I have to, this is the will of God. I need to give thanks because this is the will of God. If I believe that, then I'm going to pray differently and I'm going to act differently. And to me, this is an attitude that we need to have. Uh, go to Isaiah 65. I'll show you a verse there. Isaiah 65. And I'm going to see some smiles when I read this verse because I know this hasn't just happened to me. This has happened to you too. <laughs> Isaiah 65, look at verse 24. Verse 24 says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. Has God ever done something for you and given you something and it was very evident that he did it and then you say, I was just getting ready to ask him for that. Huh? I see some smiles. I'll tell you, that's fun. That's fun. I remember long, long, long time ago, uh, I, I was praying, playing a character at a, a VBS or something. I, it was called Uncle Richie. You know, I'm sure nobody remembers. I'm glad you don't. But I, was, I got the idea. I said, you know, I need to get me a guitar just for a prop. You know, I can't play the guitar at all. And, and, I, and there was all these garage sales. I was addicted to garage sales back then. I've advanced. Now I'm addicted to um, state sales. That's much better and, uh, or worse. <laughs> It's not a bad thing if you give out tracks. It's good. It's called the estate sale ministry, okay? And uh, maybe it's not. So anyways, I'm going down the road, and I'm thinking, I said, Lord, all these garage sales, you could, and I had the thought in my mind about praying for a guitar. And I'm thinking, wow, I feel like God's telling me to pray for a guitar. And I did. I said, okay. I said, Lord, you know where there's a guitar. You could give me a guitar. Well, sure enough, here was, a, here was a garage sale, came up, I mean, within five minutes of that, and I went down there, and I go walking up to this garage sale, and here's a guitar sitting there on a stand, but it's one of these fancy ones. It's one of these electric ones, this and that. I said, you know, and it's $125, and I said, no, nah, that's... And the lady wouldn't leave me alone. The lady says, were you looking for anything specific? I said, well, yeah, I'm just, you know, kind of browsing, just kind of... She says, is there anything you're looking for? Okay, you asked. I said, well, I'm looking for a guitar, but I'm not really looking for that. That's kind of a, uh, you know, I'm just looking for a regular six-string, no big deal. She goes, I think we have one in the basement. True story. Now, here's the thing. You can say what you want, but our God says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. And when I think about this verse here, I wasn't, I wasn't just acknowledging him in every way like I should have been, but here's a verse. God's got that covered, too. Before they call, I will answer. You see, God knows what, he knows what he's doing. And I just think if we have the right attitude in prayer, I think that we'll have far more advantage with God and for God, and, and we'll get our prayers answered because we'll be paying attention to him better. And that's the most important thing. I like this verse, and I, uh, I use it for many, many things, but I think it's a good prayer verse, and it's Philippians 1.6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1.6. If we have that confidence in him that he's going to perform it, then that changes our prayer life. I'm not going to worry about certain situations. I have confidence in him. You know, I'm standing here today because of Grandma's prayers. There's no doubt about it. I'm standing here today because of Grandma's prayers. I should have been dead. I'm telling you. But it was Grandma's prayers. Well, how much more encouraging and how much more sobering is that for me to make sure that I'm praying? If I never see the results, I do know the God of results. I do know the God that can do things. And my job is to, men ought always to pray. We ought to always be praying. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Yeah, right. I know it's tough sometimes in everything, give thanks. Listen, I'm not going to belabor you with all my situations because everybody's got situations. But I will say this. We all, if we're saved, if you're born again, you have the same Holy Spirit living inside you that I do. You have the same Holy Bible that I do. And you have the same church family that we have this love affair in our church family. You have this... I'm telling you, we have a lot of advantages, a lot of advantages. Use your advantages. Use this Bible. 
Believe the Bible. Do what the Bible says. You know, a lot of things in the Bible are conditional as far as our prayer life. Go to Psalms 55, 22. This one's on my wife's mirror at home. And I thought of this verse. I didn't, I wasn't, it wasn't in my notes, but there it was. 55, 22. Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Sounds to me like casting all your care upon him. But here's an Old Testament verse that says it's even more specific. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Could it be that if you don't cast your burden upon the Lord that he's not going to sustain you? It's kind of an if thing, is it? Is it not? If you don't do your part, he won't do his part. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your paths. Is he going to direct your paths if you're not acknowledging him? You're going to have to figure it out. I'm telling you something. It's true. Cast all your burden upon the Lord and he'll sustain you. It's very, very important that we obey the Bible and do those things so that we can have the full advantage with God and have the, have the rightness with him. We must do our part. We must stay humble. We must stay thankful. We must always pray. Men ought always to pray. Always pray. You know, sometimes it's easy to get our prayers answered. And sometimes it just seems like he's not listening today. Well, maybe the answer is no. And maybe the answer is not now. It's amazing to me how many, I can't tell you how many times, and, and God doesn't always answer it in the same fashion, but so many times. You see, people think that we golf all the time, and we don't. Maybe one and a half times a week in the good weather. Now, how much good weather do we have here, okay? 20 weeks out of the year, if we're lucky. I'm just trying to say, I always pray, Lord, just let us have some fun today. And you know what? God always lets me have some fun on the golf course. You know, I don't know if it's, it's the fun when, when Vince hits it in the water or what. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of fun, you know. <laughs> I, listen, I hit a shot when I was golfing. I hit a shot, and I didn't think, I, knew, I just knew it went in the water, but there, I could show you the picture on my phone, and there's these rocks, big rocks. Almost look like, I don't know what they are, but there's these big rocks. And the ball hit the rock and jumped up on the green. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, here's the thing. My God did that for me. It's just, a, it's just a nothing thing. But see, that verse is true. In all thy ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your paths. We serve a wonderful God. You know, my wife was, was, was kind of, well, she wasn't freaking out, but she was thinking about it. Oh, we're going to stay with a family in Hawaii. and uh, Man, they gave us a room, 24 by 24. We had a kitchenette, washer, dryer. We had all the comforts of home. We had a microwave. We had a king-size bed that was a motionless water, water bed. Oh, my goodness. That thing was wonderful. It was almost like a feather bed. It just kind of wrapped around you, and it didn't move. It started to move when you got in it, and then it just kind of, you're there, and it's like, whoa, this was cool. I'm just saying, God blessed us beyond our wildest dreams. This was a vacation and a half. And I think a lot of it was because you people prayed for us. And I appreciate your prayers. But I'm telling you, God can do things for us that's off the charts. Our problem is we have to comply. We have to do those things that he wants us to do. John 15, 7 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. How come we can't get our prayers answered? Because we're not abiding in him. There needs to be that love affair. When we come to prayer, sometimes it needs to be the P-R-A-Y. What's that mean? First, praise them. R, repent. Is there something you're doing that's wrong? A, then ask. See, that's getting your, getting your heart right so you're prepared to ask him properly. Praise, repent, ask, and then yield. Whatever you think. Don't forget to pray that. Lord, this is what I think, but Lord, what do you think? Lord, I'm yielding to you in this situation. Let me tell you something, I would, I would absolutely be crying all the time. I would quit everything that, we've, that we do if I didn't have the prayer and the relationship with Jesus Christ because of the frustrations and the different things that go on in life. But God's given us a way out over that. We need to have this attitude of prayer and we can just keep on running with the Lord. We keep on doing those things that God wants us to do. 
All right, where are you at? You're in Psalms. Go to, uh, back a couple pages, 29, chapter 29. A couple verses and I'll be done. You know, there's a clock on the wall back there, but it doesn't mean anything. Did you know that? <laughs> Heard a song this week. It was kind of cool. And it said, the clock on the wall, it doesn't mean a thing, you know. So you probably hear that one before long. I should have wrote it down. That was a good song. Psalms 29, 29 11 says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. There's a lot of verses, and these are the verses I want to show you. Peace is a big deal. To have peace in a situation. Don't give up your peace. Don't give up your peace. Um, John 14, 7. 14, 27. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, to me, these are attitudes. Look at verse 26. Verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. That stuff that he brings to remembrance is a comfort. And it's, a, it's, a, it's that peace that's coming. And, he, and if we'll just do what we're thinking about and follow the Holy Spirit's leading, and we get to have 27, Peace I leave unto you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I like Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. I won't have you turn there, but here's what it says. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. How do you keep your mind on him? Get you some verses. How do you keep your mind on him? Realize, and don't forget, don't forget when he saved you. Don't forget where you were. Don't forget how you used to think. Enjoy. enjoy. Listen, I'm saved. I get to go to heaven. I, I, he reached down in the, in the gutter. And saved me. Don't forget that stuff. Because that gives me a whole... Ad I get to go to the Father, you know? We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. It was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. How do we do that? I'm talking about prayer. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. It's important that we understand and that we have these attitudes towards... Proper attitudes towards God. I right, go to Colossians 3. I won't have you look at many verses, and I won't quote as many verses as Mark did today, okay? I'll run a close second, though. We have a good teacher that teaches us to do that. I used to think I used too many verses, but not around here. I just don't mark my Bible, so it gives you time to get there. All right, Colossians chapter 3, still not there. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye... I wonder what that means. You know, you have peace with God? Be thankful. Well, I can't believe this happened to me. I got a verse for that. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. But God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. He'll help us get through this stuff. But brethren, we've got to have this attitude that we're going to be thankful. You know, we're going to be humble. We're going to be thankful. We're going to just cast all our care upon him. We're going to be so deliberate as how we live our life. All right, now I'll finish with uh, Romans. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And there's so much in Romans. Romans chapter 8 is a great, great... The whole Bible's good, though. I'll tell you, I used to have favorites, and now I feel, man, I like this one, I like this one, I like this book. It's just amazing. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, God wants us to, to be happy. And he wants us to have peace regardless of our situations. But we're going to have to be spiritually minded. 
The way you do that is by letting this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. See, flood your mind with Bible. Get you some verses. I like Philippians uh, 4, 7. I won't have you turn there, but let me read it. It says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you're going to have God's peace that passeth all understanding, and it'll keep. You know what keep means? It means protect. It'll protect your heart, your emotions. It'll protect your mind. Now, folks, there's times we're going to cry. But if we have this attitude towards God as we're praying, we'll be all right. We'll get through that. We've had a lot of times that we've cried. You're in Romans 8. Look, look at um, chapter 14. Same thought about peace. You want to Don't give up your peace. If we have an attitude, proper attitude of prayer, we can have this peace that he wants us to have. Chapter 14, look at verse 17. Verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We have a Holy Ghost that lives inside us. There's no reason for us not to be happy. There's no reason for us not to, not to have the joy. Well, I got this situation. Well, I got this God that can take care of any situation. So just keep praying and doing the things that, that you should do. And just let the Lord take care of your situations. He can give us that peace. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Look at chapter 15, verse 13. This is the verse I showed you earlier, but it's worth reading it again. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy. Think about that. All joy and peace in believing. That's our part. We need to believe it. A lot of times we don't believe it. Well, I don't, I just don't, I don't believe it like you do. Well, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you'd hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it, you'd probably start to believe it and believe it and believe it. And pretty soon, if you'd ask God, Holy Spirit, Lord, help me to believe that verse. Listen, I have said that verse over and over, and I haven't quoted the whole thing, just two words. Lord, help thou mine unbelief. Lord, I want to believe you. Lord, help thou mine unbelief. As I'm praying, as I'm seeking the Lord, Lord, help me to believe. Lord, I need something from you. I need your peace. I need your joy. Lord, I'm having a tough time with this situation. And I'll tell you, if you'll pray and you really seek God with all of your heart in that regard, he'll give you what you need. He'll give you that joy. He'll give you that peace. All right, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 13. I'll show you one more verse, and I think that's all I'll show you. Second Corinthians 13. You know, I praise God for some of the addictions that I have today. Brother Bernie came over one time and he set my computer up and I have, I'm addicted to the computer now, especially for word studies and such, and it is amazing. You can be researching one verse and read hundreds of verses. And I love that. I love that. It's addicting, though. Thank you, Bernie. It's a good addiction, though. But I just say, as I've said all this about peace, don't forfeit your peace. Don't forfeit your peace. Have the right attitude towards God and, and just, you know, be humble and, and be thankful. And don't forfeit your peace that God wants to give us. 2 Corinthians 13, look at verse 11. It says, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Isn't that a good verse? Boy, I'll tell you. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. If we do those things, here's what's going to happen. The God of love and peace shall be with you. It's our choice, folks. It's our choice. You know, we're the most important thing to God. He wants nothing else except to hear us sing. He's consumed with us, and we are His everything. 
We must tell the world all about what he's done so that they can know how it feels to know God's son. God wants us to know him. He wants us to fall in love with him. He wants us to, to have a love affair with him. And that comes from prayer. Prayer is a tremendous tool that God's given us. He's given us the Bible. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And he's given us prayer. And we need to use it all. We need to pray one for another. And that's what we need to do, folks. That's what we need to do. All right, let's pray. Dear God, we do thank you so much, Father, for, for all your love and for meeting with us tonight. And I pray, Father, you'll just continue to work on all of our hearts. I thank you, Father, for giving me a verse, Father, when I was struggling, when I was having a tough time and how we just committed it to you, Father, how it was just so hurtful to me. And I thank you, Father, for what you've done in my life. And I hope that what I've shared tonight, Father, will be a help to these people, a help to our church. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.